On June 3rd and 4th, delegates will gather virtually and in person at the DCU Center in Worcester to vote on our Democratic nominees for governor, lieutenant governor, secretary, attorney general, and auditor. Democratic candidates for these offices must receive 15% of delegates' votes to appear on the primary ballot, and candidates who receive over 50% of the delegate vote are considered to be the endorsed candidate by the convention, endorsed by the convention. Today, we will elect 15 delegates and four alternates to represent Acton at the convention. This year's convention will take place in line with public health guidance at the DCU Center in Worcester, and the party will also provide a virtual participation option for those who do not wish to attend in person. Okay, candidates, are you all there? Are you up and ready and cleared your throat and everything? Is Maura Healy here? Is Maura Healy yes, in the yes. house? Yes, Ellen, how are you? Yes. Hi, Maura, doing just great, thank you. In, you are Maura, doing great. Not, not to rush you or anything. I can't imagine uh, how anxious I am about this one thing, and you guys do it constantly. God bless you all. Well, um, we are... Maura, um, can, we, we, can we you give us your... It at the skill that you all have used in, in running these caucuses in this time. It's it's really tricky and I've been enjoying listening to democracy in action. So thank you, Ellen, um, to you as chair and to all who were caucusing today. And thank you. More, we're gonna give you 90 seconds to make the best pitch you can make. <laughs> okay. Well, good afternoon, Acton Democrats. I'm here today to ask for your support. I am running for governor of the state of Massachusetts, and I hope to earn your support here today at the caucus and in the weeks and the months ahead. A little bit about my background. Um, I'm the oldest of five. I was raised by a mom who, after my parents got divorced, she was a school nurse and worked hard to take care of all of us. My stepdad joined the picture later. He was a high school history teacher and coach, head of his local union. We all worked. I waitressed my way through high school, college, and law school. I went to, uh, I went overseas and after captaining my college basketball team and played professional as a point guard, but then found my calling in the law, went to law school, led me to be the attorney general, ultimately after serving as head of the civil rights division. And I want to tell you that I will bring the same focus and energy that I brought to that job, to this job as governor. The times are urgent. We need action now. And I will bring the right mix of leadership, vision, and the ability to execute. Massachusetts is a great state to live if you can afford it. And right now, too many of our families are not enjoying that prosperity. I will be a governor who works to support and move economic mobility. I will invest in infrastructure, in transit, in housing. I will be the most aggressive governor in the country when it comes to combating climate change. And I will work to make our mental health services available to all families who desperately need it in our state now. Finally, I'll put equity at the center of what I do, just as I have at the Attorney General's thank office. You. I love Massachusetts and I thank you for your you. time today. And I thank you for squishing us in to your busy schedule and making it, doing the 90 second shuffle. God all bless right. you. Thank, Take and care thank you for all you have. Uh, and, and thank uh, you for all you have done. Thank you, thank you. appreciate it. Hope and, to see you and in will soon. do. Bye bye. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, now uh, we're gonna go to a surrogate for you do not look like uh, Sonia Chang Diaz, but you look familiar to most of us. Jamie Eldridge is speaking on behalf of Sonia and you have uh, 90 seconds, my friend. Great, thank you so much, Ellen. Uh, good afternoon, Democrats. And I am very proud uh, to speak here in support of my friend and colleague, uh, Senator Sonia Chang Diaz. And I would just say, when I think of Acton Democrats, especially the Acton Democratic Town Committee, I think of a group of members deeply committed to progressive change. And I think there's a recognition that as proud as I am at being a legislator on Beacon Hill, often those progressive victories are the exception, not the rule. And I wanna lift up uh, the victories and the fights that I've been a part of uh, with my very good friend, Sonia. We founded the Senate Progressive Caucus together and after which she led a five-year effort for the passage of the Student Opportunity Act, a five-year $1.5 billion increase in our K through 12 public schools, including Acton and Boxborough, at a time when Governor Baker was not going to be supporting criminal justice reform. Sonia is the only Latina senator at that time, led the effort for criminal justice reform, which we are still implementing to this day. 
And then two years ago, after the murder of George Floyd, Sonia was part of a key Senate task force to come up with the police accountability reform and to fight for things like repealing use of force and use of tear gas by police officers. So if you're looking for bold progressive change, Seven she seconds. has the record. Thank you so much and great to see you all. Look forward to participating throughout today's meeting. Thank you. And you squished it into the 90 seconds. God bless you. And we are blessed to have you representing uh, us as well as, as well as Sonia. Thank you very much. So thank you, Maura Healy. Thank you, Sonia in absentia with Jamie Eldridge. And now, uh, I, it, is the balloting finished, everybody? Are we done in there? Okay, we're still we're still doing the math. They've got all, they've got their abacuses and their and their shoes off and everything. They're working as hard as they can. So I'm going to move on to Lieutenant Governor, and we have do we have them all here? I believe they all said they would be here, but I will start with whomever I'm told is next. Tammy, great, Tammy, you, there you are, um, Sam. Tammy, uh, great graciously, I request that you uh, find me under State Rep. Dr. Tammy Govea. Oh. I'm not going to speak to you from the living room because you won't hear me. Okay, I, I, there you are. There's. Thank Tammy. you so much. Well, really Tammy appreciate it. For, okay, you get. I'll you take get less 90 than ninety seconds, seconds, my friend. Go. Yeah. All good. Well, thank you so very much, Ellen. You're doing phenomenal. The whole team really appreciate it as always. These caucus, caucuses are so important, and just appreciate all the work that goes on behind the scenes. I'm your state representative. One of them. I'm Tammy Govea running for Lieutenant Governor because I believe that we deserve leaders in the corner office who are putting our health, our well-being, and our dignity at the heart of decision making. Some of you may not know that I grew up in the city of Lowell and I was inspired to go into public service and into giving back to my community because of the experiences I had growing up in that very diverse gateway city. I've been a public health social worker for the last 25 years, leading on issues related to the opioid crisis and environmental justice. As one of your state representatives, I have stood up for racial justice and LGBTQ rights. I have passed legislation to green our transportation system and make it more reliable and more affordable. I have passed legislation to get harm reduction tools out to folks all across the Commonwealth who are struggling with substance use disorder. And I have passed legislation to address the climate crisis. As your next Lieutenant Governor, I will put the health, well-being, and dignity of every single resident at the heart of decision-making. I hope you'll support me today in the caucus and through convention and through the election and help us elect two women to the corner office. No state has ever broken that barrier. I believe Massachusetts can be the first. I'm State Representative Tammy Govea, candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Happy caucus, everybody, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for all you have done and will do, as I said to, to as I'm trying to say to everyone here. Mm -hmm. And um, now we have more. We're blessed with more Lieutenant Governor candidates here. Um, but I'm, I'm being told, do I have, uh, is Brett Barrow here? Brett? Hi, my name is Brett Barrow and I'm running for Lieutenant Governor. As Massachusetts emerges from the COVID pandemic, we need to open up in a way that's safe, but respectful for all. I have direct personal experience addressing many of the issues that are critical to Massachusetts. I was a small business owner in central Massachusetts for over 20 years. I served on the board of the largest environmental testing company in North America. I'm on the faculty of Babson College, and my wife has been an occupational therapist in a Metro West school district. While others tout their experience at the highest level of government, I'm proud to have served in local town government. And as somebody who's dealt with both cancer and COVID in 2021, I know that healthcare is a basic human right. This election is building our foundation for the future. My experiences complement rather than replicate those of our governor. I ask for your support in my race for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. I don't have any of the video. Has Adam Hines checked in? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, then great. you're it next. Well, hello and everyone, we and um, great up. job so far. It's nice to, to watch the caucus process. So I'm Adam Hines, I'm a state senator representing 52 municipalities. Um, and I decided to run for Lieutenant Governor because I'm convinced this is one of those 
rare moments in history when we can all come together for a generational step towards equity. But it's going to take folks not afraid to take on the big issues, ask the tough questions, and folks of the background of bringing people together. I, I spent nearly 10 years in the Middle East um, doing exactly that, working for the United Nations. I was involved in negotiations in Iraq, Jerusalem, and Syria. And I often joke that nothing prepares you for standing up for your region in the Senate or uh, taking on the big issues as Lieutenant Governor, quite like holding your ground in a ceasefire negotiation with the Foreign Minister of Syria. Uh, but I always want to come back home and, and take on the big issues here. And so I started a program in Pittsfield, working with high-risk youth, guys get involved in violence, was then pulled to a second um, nonprofit focused on mental health and job creation. I've drawn on all these experiences and the same problem-solving approach when we joined the Senate, where I'm in my third term and leading our effort to reimagine Massachusetts post-pandemic. I've led on uh, big train uh, transportation initiatives, including a train service that's going to start in Pittsfield uh, to a regional economic center. Uh, it's my bill. It's a part of a climate bill. Uh, omnibus climate bill is moving forward to say after 2030, any new car bought in Massachusetts has to be electric. Um, and, and much more. Uh, I, I recently, as a chair of revenue and reimagining mass committees, called for the rest of the uh, 2.3 billion in ARPA funds to be spent on closing gaps by race and education attainment and home ownership and business capital investments. Because this is the moment. If we're gonna if we're gonna take ourselves okay. seriously in our commitment Thank to you. equity, um, we have the resources. Let's take the bold steps. Um, I'll maybe close with this Thank if you. I have Thank the. You, Adam. Oh Thank my God. you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. I'm so pathetic. I'm cutting you right off, honey, so that we can get there. Do it, do it. You've got a caucus to run. Okay. All right. I got a caucus to run, for goodness <laughs> sake. And, you, and you've probably got three other caucuses to go to, but thank you very much for, for gracing us with your presence. Thank you so much, Adam. Nice to hear from you. Okay, and now Kim Driscoll. Kim is here. Kim, Kim is here. Kim, we saw you recently. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Thanks so much, Alan. Uh, for folks who don't know me, I'm Kim Driscoll. I'm the mayor of Salem and running to be your lieutenant governor. I've worked in local government for more than two decades, uh, previously having worked for the city of Chelsea as they came out of receivership, first as chief legal counsel and later as deputy city manager. Those early professional years taught me the value of good government and who pays the price for failures in leadership. As mayor, I've been reelected five times and it really helped make Salem, along with a team of people, a vibrant, hip, historic destination for visitors and residents alike. It's one of the reason I'm, reasons I'm excited about running for LG since I really do feel like you need a strong state partner, every community to amplify and empower work at the local level. Mayors like me have been on the ground addressing most of our most urgent fights from COVID response and recovery to racial equity, the climate crisis, strengthening our public schools and making housing more affordable. These aren't just talking points for me, they're issues that I work on every single day. Cities need that strong state partner to reach their full potential. And frankly, our state needs strong cities and towns to reach our full potential. I've been in the trenches making tough decisions and getting stuff done in my gateway city. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work for the full Commonwealth. I'm proud to be part of that GSD wing of government. I'll bring that same skill set, experience, and sense of urgency to Beacon Hill as your next Lieutenant Governor. There's a lot at stake. I know we can do this work. I know we can be better as a Commonwealth, and I want to play a role in helping do that. I'd be honored to have your support in this race and look forward to connecting with you in person as we, uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you for a few minutes today to zoom into your living rooms and kitchens and grateful to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. With our ding -a -ling go going off. Nicely, <laughs> nicely timed. Thank you again. Thank you for visiting with us and good luck to you. Thank you. And, and, and as with everybody, thank you for all. None of these people are here just from floating out of the thin air. They've all earned their way to, to um, importance and we're very grateful we're very grateful. Another candidate for Lieutenant Governor, Eric Lesser, calling from his car. Well, we will, you're on your way to another one. Thank you for fitting us in. You got 90 seconds. Go, Eric. Eric, we Eric, have we lost you? Eric, are you frozen? No, absolutely. There you Thank are. you so much, Alan. Greetings uh, from Peter Sam. I am in the parking lot of the Peter Sam Town Hall, where they just where they just wrapped up. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Yes, we okay. can. Okay. Uh, sending uh, greetings from the Peter Sam Town Hall, where I'm in the parking lot. Just wrapped up their in-person caucus. Uh, just want to quickly say hello and introduce myself. I'm Eric Lesser. I, can you hear me okay? Oh my God, it's well, coming I'll keep going. Out. I'm the state senator from Western Mass. And I believe I've got the experience and the record. Well, sorry? 
I, I believe I've got the experience and the record to be the right partner to okay. <laughs> to be the right partner to our next governor. I'll, I know you've got a lot of people to hear from, but I'll just quickly say at the height of the pandemic, I led the effort to get hundreds of millions of dollars in rescue funds out to our smallest businesses. At the height of the opioid crisis, I led the effort to get a Narcan bulk purchasing program done. that reduced the price of Narcan by more than two thirds. And for the last eight years, I've been working to secure high-speed rail service connecting our state from Pittsfield to Boston. This project would reduce greenhouse gas emissions more than anything we could ever undertake. It would create thousands of units of new housing, reducing prices for families. It would create thousands and thousands of new jobs. The missing piece is our governor and lieutenant governor that prioritize mass transit. The money is in the Biden infrastructure bill. We now need an administration to go get it done. Thank you, Eric. I will do that. Eric, we thank love you so much. Eric, and thank you. Thank you for for being for <laughs> for being in your car and making this happen. Thank you, and thank you for all that you have done. Thank you, Eric, and good luck to you. Um, okay, that was those were marvelous candidates for lieutenant governor, and I thank you all for uh, being here and sharing your your enthusiasm with us, and we wish you all the best of luck. Um, now we have Attorney General. We have, um, so that, so Shannon, I hope you're here. There you are, Shannon uh, Liss Reardon. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Shannon, you can turn yours on. Okay, I, I'm here. All right, okay, thank you so much, Action Democrats, Lee Eldridge, good to see you. I'm, I'm out west where Eric has got internet access now. Um, so great to see you, Action Democrats. My name is Shannon Liss Reardon, and I'm running to be your next Attorney General. I have spent my entire career taking on the biggest challenges and delivering big results for regular people. I've spent my entire legal career, more than 20 years representing working people. I've made national headlines, leading teams of lawyers, taking on some of the largest corporations in America and winning corporations like Starbucks, FedEx, Uber, Harvard University, which I've sued four times. I've represented all types of working people, including waitresses, truck drivers, janitors, Uber drivers, strippers, and helped them recover hundreds of millions of dollars that corporate America stole from them. This work has changed industries across Massachusetts and the country. I'm proud to have stood up for the people against the powerful and won, and that's what I'll do for you as your next attorney general. I ask you to consider my experience, my skills, my passion, and my unparalleled record of delivering meaningful change when you are picking the next attorney for the people of Massachusetts. I am so proud to have received endorsements from a long and growing list of labor unions. I'm the only candidate in this race who has received that. I'm the only practicing lawyer I, in this race. I'm the only candidate who has represented working people. Thank you so much for considering me, Act and Democrats. I, I hope to earn your support. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. And I, it looks like you're in a car as well. Is that where I, I, the, you're all, that is, you're all, all that is right. God Luminous. bless all of you. God bless all of you wandering okay. around and doing your thing. And now Quentin is here. Hello. I hope this fits your timing. You two are between yes. Hither and Jan. Uh, Thank you ahead, so much. Quentin so, oh, Talk to oh. Hello, Act and Democrats. It's so nice to be back with you. I'm Quentin Palfrey. I'm a Democrat running for Attorney General. As a former Assistant Attorney General, I've seen firsthand how much impact the office can have on people's lives. I was the first chief of the health care division at the time that we were implementing Massachusetts health reform law. So we worked hard to make sure that everyone had access to high quality, affordable health care. And I sued some big insurance companies that were taking advantage of Massachusetts residents during that critical time. I had the great honor to serve in the White House under President Barack Obama. And on day one of the Biden-Harris administration, I joined as Acting General Counsel of Commerce, led a team of several hundred lawyers and helped to launch the Build Back Better agenda. After the cruelty of the Trump administration, it's been such a relief to have some sanity in the White House. But Washington is broken. And we'd be foolish to look to Congress for the solutions to the really big challenges we face. Racial injustice, the climate crisis, attacks on our democracy and workers' rights, attacks on reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights, gun violence, and student loan debt. 
For the solutions to the really big challenges, Massachusetts needs to lead, and the AG office can be a big part of that. As the people's lawyer, the AG can bring consumer protection cases against predatory lenders, against scammers, against pharmaceutical companies like Purdue Pharma, whose lies brought us the opioid crisis. The AG can bring okay, much needed urgency. Okay, my friend, I'm going to have to ask you, to, it's great to see you again. And thank you, thank you for, for coming back and talking to us. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm doing this sure, to everyone. thanks so much. No, yeah. that's fine. It's great oh, to see everybody. Thanks for having me. You too, thank you. And thanks for all you've done and all you will do. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. you. Nice to see you. Bye-bye. Okay, now is Andrea Campbell here? Oh. Yes, is hi, Ellen. Thank you. Hi, Andrea Campbell. Good to hi. see you. We are Good to see you. Okay, 90 seconds, my friend. Give it your best shot for Lieutenant, for Attorney General. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. I jumped into the Attorney General race, frankly, recognizing that residents in Massachusetts continue to struggle and feel very frustrated with government. But what I also know to be true is that we live in the best state in the nation. And I know this because I've lived it. My childhood was filled with incredible instability. My mom actually died when I was eight months old going to visit my father who was incarcerated. My father and my brothers cycled in and out of the prison system and my twin brother would die 10 years ago while in the custody of the Department of Correction. I'm the first in my family to go to college, the first in my family to become a lawyer and go to law school. I've dedicated my entire life as an education attorney representing students for free in education cases, as an attorney for Governor Deval Patrick, as a general counsel at a regional planning agency that covered 101 municipalities in the Commonwealth, pushing to make sure every resident had access to the same opportunities I had. I'm running for attorney general because this office is more than just the chief law enforcement office. It has all the tools and resources to make sure every family has access to an education for their children, a living wage, healthcare, physical and mental tools to stay in their home, buy a home, grow their wealth. Of course, deal with racial disparities in every system that you can imagine and so much more. I hope to earn your support during this caucus season at the convention and in September. And thank you all so much for having me. Thank, thank you, you, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice, nice to see you, Andrea. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're that those were our three outstanding, they're all outstanding attorney general candidates. And we will move on to Secretary of State. Okay, team, everybody out there, I hope you're still excited about this. We have Tanisha Sullivan. Do we have Tanisha Sullivan in the house? There you go. Secretary of State candidate Tanisha Sullivan. Go. Good evening, everyone. I am Tanisha Sullivan, candidate for Secretary of State. I grew up in Brockton. I am in my 20th year of law practice. I'm the former chief equity officer in the Boston Public Schools, and I'm a civil rights leader. I have the honor of serving as the volunteer president for the NAACP in Boston. I have a track record of advancing meaningful progress in racial, economic, and social justice. And we've been able to deliver because we've done it together. At this moment, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that today we are commemorating the 57th anniversary of Bloody Sunday that led to the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 65. We know that there is still so much work to do. And in order to ensure that as we move forward, we're moving forward together, we need courageous, inclusive, and visionary leadership in the Secretary of State's office. As a civil rights leader, I can assure you that there's no one who's going to fight harder than me to ensure that we are advancing and protecting our voting rights and that we have safe, secure, and inclusive elections. But our democracy requires so much more. We have to tackle the racial and economic gaps that exist in voter participation. And in order to do that, we need a Secretary of State who is committed to community and will work side by side with you to ensure that we're cultivating a culture of civic participation. I hope that you will visit our website, TanishaSullivan.com. Have a good thank, evening. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Great to hear from you and, and, and thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, I, I, I mean that for everybody and, and I'm saying it to you with great sincerity. Thank you very much. Okay, Bill Galvin is also running for Secretary of State. He is our Secretary of State and he has sent us a video. Seldom in our history 
has the honest, accurate administration of elections been more important? I'm proud of our efforts here in Massachusetts, introducing many reforms that have led to record voter turnouts in our most recent elections. I'm also extremely concerned about the false claims of fraud that have led to violence throughout our country and indeed has led to suspicions about the accuracy of elections. In order to call out false claims of fraud, you must have the expertise and experience to do so, which I have done. I am also concerned about the ruthless efforts of Republicans to deprive citizens of their rights in other parts of the country. I think we need to continue our efforts here in Massachusetts to expand voter rights, but we also must be prepared to attack those false claims when they occur. My ask of you is this, not to reward me for my past success, but in fact, allow me to continue to lead the effort going forward. Okay, we have auditor. Okay, we have, uh, is Chris Dempsey here? Hi, Alan, it's great to see you again. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Um, give, us, give us your best shot for a minute and a half, my friend. Thanks so much, Alan Acton Dems. It's wonderful to be back with you. I'm Chris Dempsey, running to be your next state auditor. I'm running as the son of public school teachers who saw my parents digging into their own pockets to pay for school supplies for their students. I'm running as a proud Massachusetts resident who has seen that we've fallen behind in everything from transportation to racial equality. And I'm running because I've seen that when decisions on Beacon Hill are made with a lack of public accountability, that those decisions benefit people connected to Beacon Hill, but they don't benefit families like mine and like yours and the people we've met on this campaign trail from Pittsfield to Provincetown. I served as Assistant Secretary of Transportation for Governor Deval Patrick. I'm the only candidate in this race with executive branch experience, which is the focus of the job. But I've also worked outside of state government to protect the public interest as the co-founder of the grassroots No Boston Olympics, which got outspent 1,500 to one by the most powerful business interests in Massachusetts, but fought back with data and a grassroots campaign. And if you think about the job of the state auditor, it's all about facts and data and putting that back in front of the public. Because when we do that, we as Massachusetts residents make smart decisions. I'm Chris Dempsey. I'm running to be your next state auditor. I ask for your support at today's caucus and at the convention in June. Thanks so much for having me back to speak with all of you tonight. Thanks, Chris. Nicely done, my friend, and thank you. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for uh, for all you have done and, and will do. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, Alan. very much. Okay. Also running for auditor, I believe we have Diana uh, DeZiglio. Are you here, Diana? Thank you, Chris. I am, Madam Chair. Close enough. Yes, uh, Diana is fine. <laughs> Diana is fine. Okay. And, and we're gonna, I don't see you yet. There you are. Okay. And we're going to give you the old uh, minute and a half, minute and a half routine. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so um, much. My name is Diana DiZoglio. I'm a senator from the Merrimack Valley running for state auditor because working families deserve access to and accountability from our state leaders and agencies, regardless of our family background, our bank balance, or our zip code. Born to a 17 year old single mom, I grew up housing insecure cleaned houses and waitressed my way through community college and worked hard to earn scholarships to become the first in my family to graduate. Without the investments of others, I would not have had the opportunities I did. So I know how important it is that investments made into state government through your tax dollars are used wisely because every wasted dollar puts another child's future opportunities at risk. There are enough barriers to access. Beacon Hill should not be one of them. Right now, Massachusetts continues to be ranked by good government groups as the least transparent of any state government in the nation. We're exempt to public records laws, committee votes are not public, taxpayer funded NDAs silence workers, and power is centralized into the hands of a few. I'll be an auditor who opens state government to everyone and shifts the balance of power back to the workers. I've been a small businesswoman, was chief of staff to the professional firefighters of Massachusetts, served at our local community centers, and have been fighting for transparency, accountability, and equity in the legislature now for 10 years, going line by line in that state budget. I have the proven track record of speaking truth to power that we need in the auditor's role. It's why I've earned the support of our Congresswoman, Lori Trahan. I hope to earn your support as well, Thank Acton. Thanks so much for having Having us here tonight. I can't wait to see you all in person. Thank you. Thank you. Nicely done. And thank you. And thank you for all you've done. And good right back at you, Madam Chairwoman. <laughs> thank you, Diana. 
this is that, that this is a, a pleasure. A ple I, I'm I'm enchanted with all of these people, and I wish they could all run the world. Thank you.